Hey everyone on the other end of the internet, thanks for joining me. This is Kelly from Nice Lady Productions. Every once in a while, there is a product that comes out that sends ripples in the water for other manufacturers who can't get their head around how the company was able to create an incredibly designed, feature-rich product at an amazing price. The Nucleus M wireless Focus Iris Zoom System from Tilta is one of these standout products. So get ready for a full in-depth review as well as a tutorial. I'm gonna walk you through the design, how to set the system up, show you the different ways you can calibrate your lenses, and then talk about the features. So hit pause, grab your favorite drink, come back, sit down, and let's jump right into it. There's no way you can look at this system and think, wow, this is, seems kind of cheap. Everything about it says money. Tilta hasn't cut the corners on any of the design. This is a multi-channel system. So it comes with two motors, two handles. The handles can be attached to anything with an area rosette, and you can purchase a separate connector like I have here that connects the two handles together and then attaches them to a shoulder mount using Studio 15 or 19 millimeter rods. It comes with adapters for rigging the system up to a Ronin or Movi or other systems out there. If you want to attach the handles to the adapters for a gimbal, you do need to use an Allen key, which is a little awkward. The handles and the hand unit run on batteries. The batteries aren't included. I bought 12 of them and it cost me about $150 Canadian. The entire system uses six of them and the system comes with a battery charger, which is a nice touch. The system is set up to be a little James Bond. Yeah, there's a manual that shows you how to set everything up, but I was still like, how do I get in the battery compartment? Oh, this tiny little button on the bottom that no one would see. Tilta is selling an adapter so you can mount an area rosette to the back of it if you want to attach your wireless follow focus system to your wireless monitor. The motors can be powered by one single D-tap coming off of a camera battery V-mount or through your camera. And I just realized that if you plug one of the motors directly into one of the hand units, you can power it through the hand unit batteries, which means you could power the system using the handles with a mirrorless camera or DSLR or any camera system where you didn't have D-tap. Brilliant. The system comes with a beautifully designed hand unit for a focus puller, first AC. The wood along the focus controller is just a really nice touch. The system comes with multiple marking discs as well as some follow focus adapters so as you can see, the kit is fully featured. I think the only thing that's really missing from this is a Tilta branded grease pencil. I mean, wouldn't that be just perfect for putting marks along the marking disc? So what I love about the system is how compact it is. Everything that runs the motor is really built into the motor. You don't need any separate pieces and the motors are quite thin for what they are and really, really well built. It takes some getting used to jumping through the menus. And I suggest before you rig it up, set it up so that you're not, you know, setting it up on rails and then having to um, read the fine print and go through the settings because it is fine print on these LCDs. I really want to go through and walk you through the setup. A lot of the buttons on this system work by double tapping. And the idea is that you don't wanna be changing settings by accident by pressing the button once. And remember, once you set this up once, the system will remember it. So the H delineation that you see on the screen on the left is the wireless signal strength. If you think that you're gonna be operating right next to the camera and you think low is good enough, then set it to low. I set it to maximum which is H high. You're gonna to wanna to do the same step of setting the signal strength on each of the motors as well as the hand unit and the handles. 
The next thing you're going to do is select your wireless channel number. And you want to find one that basically works without any interference. I randomly chose 15. The main thing to know is your hand grips, your motors, and your hand unit all have to be set to the same number. If you decide that you're going to be on channel 15, that means that every single unit should say channel 15 at the same wireless signal strength. They all want to be on the same wireless network. After you've done that, the last step you have to do is to give your motor a unique number between one and four. For me, motor number one is my focus motor. Motor number two is my iris or zoom. The motor numbers have to be unique so that you can say to the follow focus hand unit, hey, this dial is gonna control motor number one and my iris dial on the side is gonna control motor number two. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this. And if you had a third motor, you would have number three. So don't get mixed up between the channel and the motor number. Two different things, the channel is your Wi-Fi. Now, one of the things I will say is, it might be beneficial for you to put like a piece of gaff tape on the back of each of the motors once you've set them up to say, you know, this is motor number one and this is motor number two, so that you're not setting it up, powering it up, and then going, oh, I have it in the wrong order. Okay, so once you've set up motor number one and two, you're gonna wanna go in and you're gonna wanna tell the hand unit, hey, I want you to be on the same Wi-Fi network. I want you to use the same Wi-Fi strength, which I chose as high or maximum. And my network number is 15. And then you're gonna go in and you're going to do a couple things. The first is you're gonna change the torque. There are a lot of people online that have said, this system has a lot of torque, which I would say is a compliment because if you know anything about some of the other wireless follow focus systems on the market, one of the complaints with them is that they don't have enough torque. And then you're gonna go in and you're gonna hit sync. And you're gonna decide that for the main follow focus knob on my hand unit, I'm going to link that with motor one. Now that's just because that's what I picked. And you can decide that for the little zoom rocker on the side, you're gonna link that to motor two. Or for me, I prefer the iris switch on the right side of the hand unit for iris. So if you look at the LCD screen here, you can see that I have matched motor one to my focus. You see the F on the far left, you see one on the far right, and 30% is the amount of torque. For iris, which you see the I, I have a 30% torque set, and I'm matching that to motor two, and I have nothing set for the zoom rocker on the left-hand side of the hand unit. There's a little unlock designation at the bottom of the screen, and if you hold the function button on the left-hand side of the hand unit, you can lock all the buttons so that you don't press anything accidentally. Very nice, but also really good to know that that exists. When you're done that, you're gonna do the exact same setup with the hand units. It's really easy. Again, you're gonna double tap, and the down arrow means down when you're selecting and going through the menu. The menu button means up. And the front record button means okay. And yeah, it's not like the easiest system to kind of get through as far as the menu goes. But you know what? Once you do it, like I said, the system remembers your settings and you don't have to do it again. Okay, let's quickly walk through the process for calibrating your lenses. There's three ways you can calibrate depends on partially the kind of lens you're using and also preference. By default, the motors are set to not auto calibrate. And the reason they did this is to protect lenses that didn't have hard stops built in. You can go into the motor and say, I want this to auto cal. And that way, every time the motor is switched on, it will run through your lens and go to each endpoint and then it'll be calibrated. So AutoCal is the simplest and it works great. The only thing I would suggest is make sure that the lens gears are really in there tight together. The second way to calibrate is to auto calibrate, but use the hand unit. So 
set the motors so that they don't automatically calibrate the lens. Simply hit the calibrate button on the side of the hand unit and have the motor go through your endpoints. You can also hold down the calibrate button and then the selector button on the hand unit and select which motor you want to calibrate. So that's the second easy way to do it. So I'm going to give you another example of how you could use auto calibrate with a stills lens. And this is with mixed results and I'll show you why. I've got the second motor hooked up to the zoom on the Tamron 24-70 G2 series lens. This is a fantastic lens. And at startup, you see right away, the motor just pushes away from the lens. I've got it in there really tight. I couldn't really figure out what was going on. What I ended up doing was the second time you see the motor auto calibrate, I put a little pressure on the motor so that the motor sticks right up against the lens. I really think that you probably get better grip between the motor gears and a lens gear if you mount the motor slightly lower or higher than the lens. It's just a theory. I don't know. It's just what I think probably happens because of the angle that it's matching the gears. All right, now the third way to calibrate a lens is to manually calibrate it. And this is what you would do with lenses that have no hard stops. And I have a trick to just make it less hard on your lens. So you're gonna go into the hand unit and select manual calibration. So first off, move the motor gear away from the lens and take the focus knob and turn it all the way clockwise. And then you're gonna take your lens and you're gonna rotate it all the way to minimum distance. And then you basically are fooling the system and, and then you just hit enter. Now that the motor is connected to the lens, go back to your hand unit and you turn the focus knob all the way to the end where you find your infinity focus. So you wanna match it and then you hit okay. And you can see I have the range I've set from minimum focus distance to infinity. It didn't give any torque because I basically said to it, here's my endpoint. I manually set it. And then I just showed it where the other end was and hit okay. Now remember, because these motors are daisy chained, when you hit power on one, you could have power on the other, but to power the first one back on, you have to power the last one off and then power the first one back on and then you'll power both of them on. And that's just how it goes when you have a system that is powered by one D-tap and the rest of the motors are daisy chained. So you can see by the indication lights at the bottom which motors have been calibrated and which ones have not. If you haven't noticed, the system is so fast as far as startup goes. The system overall is extremely quiet. I hear more noise from my actual lenses than from the motors. There's three different ways to calibrate, so you can use it with different lenses. There's zero latency with the system that I have found, and I have controlled the motor from 70 feet away and had Wi-Fi on on my camera. The torque can be too high specifically for stills lenses. And one of the big complaints about this system is every time you power down the motors, the calibration of the lens is lost. It does not remember the last lens that was calibrated. Maybe Tilta can improve this in a firmware update. I don't know. The initial setup, it does take some time. I mean, if you have a video that's as good as this one, maybe now you know everything and you can just fly through the startup. But for me, it took a while. What I love about the Tilta Nucleus M is the features. You can set digital marks on both the hand unit and on the handles. Simply double tap the mark button on the side of the hand unit. It sets your first mark, your A mark. Double tap again, you get your B mark. Double tap again, you get your C mark. If you hold down the mark button and then you use the focus knob, you can set a range. And this is a really nice touch for times when you know you're not gonna be using the whole focus range. So you can literally dial in just 
certain areas, and then even within those areas have marks. When you hit those marks, the unit vibrates a bit in your hand. And so you don't even have to look down to see if you're hitting the marks. You can be looking at the monitor while you're pulling focus and let the system tell you when you're hitting your A, B, C, D, E marks. Really, really nice. This is William. He's from the filmmaking duo Fort Langley. They make really cool music videos with a high level of art direction, so check their stuff out. He dropped by with his Arri Alexa and Zine Lens to test out the Nucleus M. He used the hand unit to set focus marks and then racked focus between them by feeling the vibration on the hand unit. If you double tap delete, it deletes the last mark that you set and then it goes back in reverse order. You can also set focus marks with the hand grips. How cool is this? You can set it for the zoom rocker, you can set it for the focus, you can set it for iris. Basically double tap the button underneath the focus dial Move the focus along, pick your second point, double tap again, and you'll see the illuminated LED on the back, which says you have your AB point set, and you can actually see it on the side LED as well. As well, you can set up what I think is really cool illumination. You've got a little key LED at the bottom, and you have the focus ring that also illuminates. You can have it set to on, you can have it set to off, or what I did was I have it set so that when it gets dark in the room I'm shooting in, it automatically comes on. Because the motors are mounted to a single rod, I'd be pretty tempted to mount them to one of these Rhino mounts from Red Rock Micro because it would work really well on like a gimbal. Lastly, I just want to talk about these handles. For me, this is probably the most important part. I can see these being used on documentary shoots, on film shoots when you're shooting handheld. I mean, just the ability to be able to keep your hands on the handles and focus and change your iris and your zoom right from there and actually dial in focus points. Amazing, right? Another great little feature is you can change how long or short the focus throw is on the hand units by using the little button on the front. As far as a shoulder mount system goes, the handles are really comfortable. I also love that the system gives the option for start stop record for red cameras and airy cameras, and I'm sure they'll have start stop record cables for other cameras in the future. If you're using a red camera, simply connect the cable to one of the hand grips that have the record button on it. And you're gonna go into the settings, go into communication, red command protocol, and hit okay. When you click the record button on the hand grip, you wait about four seconds and your camera is recording. And I don't know about you, but this changes everything for me. For me, gear becomes important when it allows you to do something you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And I really think that the Tilta Nucleus M is one of these pieces of gear that does that. This system went out on a 10 day shoot with a group of filmmakers. The camera department loved the system. The focus puller was over the moon on what they were able to accomplish with it. And they said that it worked flawlessly with their cinema lenses. So that's the kind of review and customer experience you want to hear. And you know, if I could say anything to Tilta, the most important thing is the customer experience. So, you know, yes, it may take longer to build these things, but test each one of them. Test every cable, test every handle, test the operating system so that every customer has that great experience. Tilta has done a remarkable job with the Nucleus M. This is a fully featured Focus Iris Zoom wireless system. And the fact they were able to design something so good with such a great high quality build and execute it 
at the price that it is, I'm astonished. So I'm sending out a massive kudos to Tilta for pulling this off and moreover for giving me a piece of equipment that's actually going to improve the way I film. Okay, that's it from me. I hope you guys learned a lot from this review. I know it was a long one. Please subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media. Let me know what you think in the comments. And we'll talk again.